Hi, this is Scott with the Android Guys Podcast. I'm sitting here with Luke. Hey. Hey, Luke. What's going on, man? Uh, let's see. Football season's underway. It is. As a... Uh, now, I've got two teams that I'm big on, and you know this. Same. Yeah. Hey, same. Uh, obviously, the Browns. Yep. Lifelong. Go Browns. Go Browns. And then I'm also a... Uh, as long as I can remember watching football, I've been a Packers fan. Yeah, so. I don't want to talk about that part. Hey, because you want to talk about my my number two is the Falcons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we. Uh, How are you guys doing this year? Hey, you know what? We won a game that we weren't supposed to win because we're not supposed to win any games this year. You were? Were they predicting a winless season? No. But okay. Might as well. They are not good this year. <laughs> okay. But they won. They won last week, and uh, I was. As surprised as everybody. Andre Ryzen have a big game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what, Matt? Listen, it, it's more... I got into that team um, after being sick of being a Browns fan and mm-hmm. just constantly uh, rooting for the losers. I was like, you know what? I want another team, somebody that might be good. And I'd always liked the Falcons. I think back from like... Vic days, yeah, because he was just so fun to watch. Uh, personal life aside, uh, but I went went to them and they had a really fun team. They had mm-hmm. um, uh, Matt Ryan, Matty Ice. He's mm-hmm. just he's he can be clutch when he needs to be clutch. And then at that time, they still had Tony Gonzalez, which is arguably one of the greatest tight ends in football. I forgot about that. Yeah, and. Uh, and then Julio Jones, mm-hmm. who's no longer on on the Falcons, he's now a Texan, I think. Um, but they have a good team. They have some guys that you know really uh, some really good. Then their defense is always decent, uh, but they just they have so many different problems, just not quite there. in the last two seasons, I mean, they made it to the Super Bowl like what three years ago. And four years ago, no, it's longer than that. We have to, yeah. When it's we so start looking at that. time, yeah, yeah. you got to take two off the table right away because of the pandemic. Right, right, like, right, right, right Whatever right. it is, add yeah. to. It's forever. But anyways, it was it was the Super Bowl with uh, the great comeback from uh, the Pats and Tom Brady being Tom Brady. Um, but yeah, they're not good right now, and so I feel like it's weird because I'm rooting for a team that's not good and also rooting for the Browns who are good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels like everything is flip-flopped in my world. Yep. Uh, February 2017. That's that's it. Yeah, so Two, five three. years ago, five, four years. <laughs> <laughs> Math is hard. Yeah. That's going to be about three and a half, Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't – Yeah, uh, That was – what a game. That was a crazy game. I was a fan of the Falcons that night. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm a – yeah, I was not a fan of the Patriots. No, and no. well, I think some of that is rooted in this Belichick. Yeah, he's the greatest mastermind coach. Yeah, he, he can he sees things coming and everything he does is playing six moves ahead. Like, yeah, why didn't we get any of that when he yeah. was in Cleveland? I know, right? Yeah, so that's I've always had a tr- you know problem with that, and sure. then just the fact that they continued to just win and win and win. Yeah, not – yep. so, yeah, as a Browns fan my whole life, and then I was also – the first game I ever went to was a Browns and Packers game. All right. So it was formative. It stuck yeah, with me. Sure. And as a kid, you're like, well, the Browns are obviously, but I'm going to keep an eye on the, these Packers. Yeah. So it wasn't long after that we had Brett Favre. Yeah. And then it's been a fun ride. Yeah. You know, for – about 20 years. Yeah, Rodgers is great, man. Yeah, so. I'm a big fan of Aaron Rodgers. I like him. Yeah. This Christmas. Yeah. December 25th. Mm-hmm. I have a Sophie's Choice. Mm. The Browns play the Packers on Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I have to figure out how I'm going to cheer for that one. Yeah. It's gonna, the whole, I just hope they have a good game no I want you who to, wins. I want you to, I want to see you in a, like a two-faced costume. <laughs> With like half Browns fan, half Packers fan. Yeah, I'm, you're not gonna get that. Like a half cheesehead hat. You're not gonna get that. All right. Um, well, there's still time. 
I I can't be swayed <laughs> that easily. Uh, yes, that that'll be interesting because I I know that's coming. But there are going to be people that when they realize that the game is starting to be advertised, oh Scott, what are you going to do? Yeah, are yeah, you going to yeah. what? And then there are people who predict that could be a Super Bowl game too. Mm. Somebody had a preseason pick of the Packers over the Browns in the Super Bowl. Interesting. So, yeah, you do that. I just hope both teams play well and they don't have penalties and stupid stuff. And yeah, just a good game, right? Yeah. That's what you always want to see. I think that's – and we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier today is just being a fan of football, you just like seeing a good game mm-hmm. where it's just playing not not bad mistakes, not bad calls, just – Good old football, right? Um, so yeah, that would be a that would be a fun game to watch. Yeah, in theory, I mean, if both teams continue to do mm-hmm. what they're expected, you know, get to the end of the season, and now you're looking at playoff implications and right. maybe home field advantage somewhere. Yep, and, yep, yeah. So exciting times. Weird to say that <laughs> yeah, as a right? Browns fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is really weird. Like my wife has always been kind of like. After the game, it's like, hey, the Browns won. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> or, hey, uh, the Browns got beat. No oh, shocker. <laughs> you know, it's like, babe, I don't. I love you, but right now I don't like you. Yeah. I. You don't get to get excited if the Browns win the Super Bowl. Yeah, name a player. Yeah. It, that's the thing is it, it just, it will taste so much sweet. Well, we know that as Cavs fans. Right. How hard it is to mm-hmm. be there year after year, not get there. Yeah. But then when you win it, even if it's just one time, it just mm. feels so good. So good. So I need that. Yeah. I mean, it's been a few years. I need it again. Yep. So hopefully the Browns do it, but not at the expense of the Packers. Well, I mean, if if they do it, it will be at the expense of at least the Packers. If somebody else takes the Packers out first. Sure. Well, that's okay. So Luke, you're, you're starting hoping, to depress me. You're hoping for <laughs> Packers all the way, but yeah. if Browns all the way, Packers need beat before the big game. And right, but then there's also the whole thing of like, is this Rogers' last ride with the team? Sure, and the last chance for this to have. Sure, you know, and then. We got to throw in the random chance of just injuries. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. You want to talk about something else? Yeah. <laughs> this is getting me all screwed. Yeah, let's talk about uh let's talk about New York cheesecake. No, 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 no. You got the You're talking about the code name. Oh, right, 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 right. I think our notes are all screwed up this week. No, they're not. Are you, okay. No, we're talking about nougat. Nougat. Android the, 7. Yes, this is um uh, the deep dive kind of episode series that we do here is we go back and look at the major software releases and what goes into Android at the time, what makes the software experience so cool. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about devices of the day, typically what launched right around that time. Right. With that software as its, you know, base software. Yeah. And each week we do this, we, d- we go back um we don't have to go back as far no and uh it still feels a little weird to, yeah to kind of do that you yep. know just like you said with the super bowl like oh yeah when was that but this is this predates that yeah so we're gonna go back to august 22nd now this is the official release of sure android but this is the first time where they kind of said hey in march they put out a thing that basically said, we've got a beta program, so here's an alpha release that's available for select devices. Right. And then a few weeks later, six weeks or so, they put out a beta 2, mm-hmm. and then over the course of the summer, a few more drops of updated features right. ahead of the formal release. So for the sake of discussion here, we'll go with the August date? Yeah. Is that what you have? Yeah. Okay. So... What we tend to do before jumping into the software side of things, we kind of get in the frame of mind of what was going on in the world. Yeah, set the stage, get you in the mindset of what was August 
twenty second, two thousand sixteen, like. That was my son's birthday. All right, go on. That's all I can remember. So, in uh, in August, if we so we go through pop culture, music, movies, and TV. So if if you were listening to the radio at this time, the three uh, top songs of the time were "Cheap Thrills," Sia featuring Sean Paul. Okay. The next was "One Dance." That was Drake with Wiz Kid and Kyla. Okay. And then a uh, third is This Is What You Come For, Calvin Harris featuring Rihanna. Okay. So that, those. That, I, that feels like a time. Yeah. As you think about. It that. doesn't. It, that one doesn't stick out to me as much as previous ones that we've talked about. Yep. Um, it feels like that time, but I don't feel like things were oversaturated with right. just constant bombardment. Well, now, it, again, I don't listen to the radio. That's true. Me either. But I don't feel like some of these songs that we've talked about in other releases were ones that were like, I can't get away from this song. Yep. And these ones, if I'm honest, I'm struggling to remember what any of those were. Yeah. You could play them and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But when we get into movies and TV, this is this is where you go, oh. Uh, so movies, uh, movie releases around that. The remake of Ben Hur. Oh, is yeah. that, you set me up. That's for it. That. That's the one. <laughs> uh, War Dogs. Remember that movie? Yep. And then Kubo. Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh my goodness! That Leica yeah. animated movie. Yep. So good. That movie is great. Those were all out at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then if we go to TV, around there's not a lot that came out around August, but. In this is the these are the TV shows that were probably talked about around the water cooler maybe yeah, uh, Van Helsing on Sci Fi premiered. Dude, I forget that that was even a show. It's not not great, man. Um, but the other two, Vice Principals on HBO, great stuff. Oh, hilarious! And then Stranger Things on Netflix. Very interesting. Yeah. So Stranger Things on Netflix was released uh, oh, end of or middle of July. All right. So one month before. Yeah. So I think around this time was probably when people were like, "Hey, have you seen that show mm-hmm. on Netflix about the the kids and uh, the monster?" Yep, I remember. And I'm gonna, hi Sean. Yeah. I'm gonna shout him out here. Uh, I uh, remember watching the show and just being immediately hooked on this. Perfect encapsulation of like the eighties. Yeah. Just right away before Will's even riding his bike home yep. on that pilot. And I was like, Oh, this is this is it. This yeah. this feels so accurate and so good. Absolutely. And the opening like the synth music and yeah. the credits were like right up to like John Carpenter and mm-hmm. Stephen King and it's like I'm I'm in. I'm yeah. sold. That and soundtrack is so good still. Yeah. That's my that's my preferred Soundtrack to play at Halloween when I pass out candy. Ooh, yeah. That's I've a got good a little, one. I'll take a Bluetooth speaker out there. Yeah. And then I'll throw on like uh, Thriller and some other sure. you know, monster Fun mash. stuff, yeah. Yeah, for kids that are coming up to the house. <laughs> but um, usually uh, Stranger Things will play. And then this particular speaker dances like colors and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, so nice. People see it and they're drawn to it. But then it's interesting to see how many kids are like, oh, is that Stranger Things? Yeah. yeah. So – Man. So, okay, yeah. so we're looking at right around five years ago. Yeah. Man. Okay. I'm in the headspace. You there? I'm there. You want to talk about nougat? Yeah, let's talk about nougat. All right. So what we typically do, we're talk about the things that go into the Android software right. that uh, make it special. Mm-hmm. Uh, for nougat, I have um, honey, sugar, um, <laughs> whipped... <laughs> What are you laughing at? Uh, are you doing the ingredients of nougat? Almonds, hazelnut, walnut, pistachio, sometimes candied fruit. Okay. Bro, I got the wrong. <laughs> I have 900 words <laughs> on confections. Oh, my God. We got to fire the intern. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm just kidding. One. I have some Android stuff here. No, that was good. Android Nougat. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. That one. <laughs> okay, so uh, 
this was an interesting release. Yeah. It wasn't a uh, case of being like in your face changes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything where you looked at it and thought, ooh, this is uh, a radical departure. Right. But it still felt like uh, enhancements and steps, you know, in the right direction of quality of life, uh, getting smarter and more cohesive. And mm-hmm. I think that comes with when we talk about the phone here uh, in the second half of the show. But uh, they had switched over to a JIT or JIT, just mm-hmm. in time uh, compiler, which improves performance. And mm-hmm. that's something that, you know, we could say pretty much every time is. Sure. Battery life gets better, performance gets better, uh, but this reduces uh, storage needs for apps. Yeah. And it also allows for faster updates of the software. Sure. So it kind of opens the door to, you know, you know, monthly security patches mm-hmm. and updates and just the ability to push out Android quicker. Right. Um, without having to do all of this you know, jumping through hoops with uh, here's the software and then carriers and phone makers have to kind of decide, yes, this is approved for our network and, right. you know, we've made these changes. So that was a big thing if you were a developer, uh, you can write your app or game mm-hmm. to take advantage of that. Um, but in terms of uh, back end stuff, back-end stuff, the other one was uh, the Vulkan API, which basically opens the door up to high-end 3D graphics yeah. and makes it so that games can be much more like smoke effects and particles and right. lighting and ray tracing and all these really cool things, right. you know, on a phone. Yeah. Uh, whether that is something you take advantage of, sure. you know, it's all user based, but a lot of the other stuff that I have written down here is uh, pretty much in the um, user facing kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hit a couple of those? Yeah. So it, there was uh, an addition of VR mode with the Google Daydream. So that was uh, the, the I mean, headset, I guess. is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember when that was first uh, launched, it was, a you know, that was kind of right when people were, were starting to go, oh, yeah, VR is cool. Like, it's not, yeah, you know, uh, it, it's not this... Um, thing in a sci-fi show like it it was starting to be more accessible and you could see uh the value of it there's a lot of like interactive learning Mm -hmm. that is vr based which was cool where you could go to these places and then you know kind of walk around and see the uh you know see the little plaques of like hey this is what you know you walk around a virtual zoo or museum or uh yeah that was now that specifically comes from the 7.1 release mm-hmm. of Nougat, uh, which actually comes a month or two after sure. the, the release there. Um, but that was a big one mm-hmm. because at that point it was kind of like, oh, I thought VR was supposed to cost thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars, right. you know, and, and be reserved for select few people and – Google took the approach of the daydream Mm -hmm. and said, well, you can actually just use your phone and put it in one of these headsets Mm -hmm. and um, you can get the same experience. Was this the same time as cardboard? Yeah, right around. um, So, yeah, that was cool that they released, you know, essentially plans for mm -hmm. making your own. Yeah. And they had cheap headset cheap cardboard units that you could get to you could, yeah, you or could free. Just, yep. um, and then there were, uh, at the time, uh, I'm trying to remember, 2015, I believe, was when the first cardboard stuff really yeah. took off. Um, because I remember they had promotional ones around The Force Awakens. Right. Yep. So that was the year before. But yep. then they said, okay, Daydream kind of puts it up to more intentional Right. Professional. Um, and there were devices that were considered daydream compatible, mm-hmm. you know, that were designed that when you put it in there, mm-hmm. it knew what to do with your right. screen. Right. Uh, so that was a whole interesting uh, time because I remember feeling like it was going to be uh, like 
3D phones all over again. Yeah. Here's a technology that we think is worth looking into. Right. Or we think is going to be the new wave. Um, I was a little bit of trepidation because I didn't know, but yeah. I was more optimistic about that than I was 3D. Yeah. I could see myself using that more than I cared about 3D. Right. Um, and, and not just like interacting with my phone and looking at the wallpapers and stuff that are 3D, but like content and games and movies, I didn't want to consume that on a phone. Right. Well, and this kind of set the groundwork. This is just me speculating. Kind of set the groundwork for augmented reality. Yeah. Because we would see things and daydream and go, oh, that would be cool if I could do that on my phone, Mm -hmm. like outside of this headset. Yeah, because... You would see once in a while something that would pop up where an app or something that would use the camera and kind of capture what's going on in the real world and then present it in a way that you were looking at it on your screen. But if you had it up to your eyes, you know, and that's that's where resolution on screens start to get important. Yep. You know, if you're talking about a 720p Mm -hmm. versus something that's, you know, 1080 and 1440 that's when you really start to see those pixels. Right. Um, so, yeah, VR mode was uh, around for a couple of years, mm-hmm. but then it just kind of slowly, quietly dissipated, and, mm-hmm. you know, we don't really even talk about it. Um, hit me with another feature. Uh, so there were in, – it improved doze, so mm-hmm. you no longer um, required the phone to be still. Right, because doze was introduced with Marshmallow. Yep. But a lot of that was contingent upon, you know, putting your phone down for the night. Right. So it's on the nightstand and it's stationary. It's not moving. It knows I'm not being used. Right. Where this one, uh, the updates to it pretty much started the second you threw it in your pocket. Right. So if you were done, it starts to learn, like, uh, you're not going to use this for a while. Right. Or you haven't touched this. Let's go ahead and put the, you know, put this in hibernation or whatever. Right. Yeah, it almost went off of a uh, just a timer instead of using the gyroscopes or anything mm-hmm. to sense. Yeah, and that's you know we had talked about how on different shows about how some of our phones now will present apps and shortcuts to things that yeah. are, hey, we think you're going to use this. Mm-hmm. So you, our phones know us better than we think they do. Mm-hmm. And it knows that you're likely to pull up your banking app on Friday morning. Right. So it puts the icon on that row. Right. Or it knows you tend to pull out and play Pokemon Go all the, you know all day, so that's always there. Mm-hmm. Or your calculator at certain times. So right. if it knows that, then it knows you're likely not to open this again. Right. So it can, you know, doze or set uh, apps to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, it revamped the notifications. So, um, they were wider. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you also had actionable, um, like you could reply. Yeah. And that's been a slowly evolving thing Mm -hmm. even till today, uh, with how much they let you see in notifications and how much you opt to let show up on a lock screen. And, um, but it was nice to do that. I know also with notifications, they kind of grouped them yeah. based off of the app. So you wouldn't have four different Hangouts messages, but right. it might say Hangouts. Yeah, it would show one, and then if you got another and another, it would just group them together, yeah. and then you could tree it down to see each yeah. one individually. Which, I mean, was good because even today, after having all of those things mm-hmm. uh, implemented, you still start to see, you know, if you pick your phone up after lunch, you realize, wow, I've got all of these things, all these games that I have on my phone, all telling me to come back and play. Right. Games, emails, Miss, spam emails, text missed calls. messages, missed calls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So had they not done something like this, who knows what our yeah, notifications. you just have a huge long list and it was really hard to go through that. And along those lines, they gave us the first time, I believe, the clear all. Yes. So that you could go in there and actually get a true, mm-hmm. clear all this stuff out. I'm, you know, I'm okay. I'll I'll catch up on everything else right. later. Um, the other one that I see here that I didn't really use much. I, I'm interested to see how you used it. Is split screen mode same? 
very rarely. Yeah. More of a proof of concept uh -huh. to show people because whenever a new version of Android comes out, people tend to ask me, what's the difference? Why mm -hmm. do I care? What sure. should I look for? And in some cases, it's not as overt. Right. So I would have you know to describe it or show somebody. And this is one where I'd say, hey, if you want to open up Maps and continue to chat with somebody, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not a, I'm not much of a split screen user. Yeah, I'm a back and forth. Which yeah, I multitasking. Think, and I think this was the first time also where we could uh, double tap the recent apps, mm -hmm. and it would basically take you back to the app you were just on. Yeah, so you can kind of like do most recent kind of right. like uh, last channel on the TV remote. Right. Um, yeah, split screen's never been a thing for me. Um, once in a while, if I'm, I have to have a conversation going, and maybe um, need to pull up something in my email to reference. Sure, you know. But for me, I'm not. Uh, it's not my thing. Yeah. If if you're listening and you use it, I I'm interested to see, you know, how you would use that or or why you use that. So if if you do, just you know, send us a message on. On Twitter, or yeah, uh, you can email us at uh, what is it? Podcast at AndroidGuys. Podcast at AndroidGuys. dot com. Yep. Um, let's see other settings here. Uh, file based encryption, not system wide. That's a pretty big deal. It if, is. If you're if security is your thing, mm -hmm. and you care or you are concerned that you know if somebody can get into my phone. And they can get into certain files or what if I can rest easier knowing that the files are encrypted and not right. just the phone. Like right. if you bypass the phone's encryption, now you can get into whatever you want. But right. here it was file based, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, just another layer of protection. Right. And and that's something that I think we start to get into kind of um, more of a mindfulness of what we do with our phones, how we're using them, um, you know, that starts to get into the direction of digital well-being. Right. Uh, you know, having that knowledge, you know, it, it's 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 helpful of how mm -hmm. often am I using my phone? What am I using my phone for? Um, I can use my phone for so much more now than I could a few years ago. So... It makes sense to have these concerns of, man, if this thing falls into the wrong hands, right? And somebody guesses my pin, right? You know, so, yeah. um, yeah, and this is also, uh, I know at least for me and you, this is right around the time, maybe not quite. We were getting into cryptocurrency, yeah, and you could, you know, then encrypt your your codes for your wallet and stuff like that, yeah. It makes me feel safer doing that right now, having seen that type of change, right? You know, and biometric stuff, face unlock, oh, fingerprint, yeah. and not just like a pin. Well, and that's that. I mean, this perfect segue there, guy. Yeah, uh, this had trusted face, so as part of the smart lock, mm -hmm. uh, it was l better, it was just basically uh, made it a little smarter. You didn't have to have. Uh, you know, if you had eyeglasses on or the lighting was dark, it, it just made it so it was more uh, – the camera was way better at knowing it was you. Yeah, you didn't have to uh, replicate that. The original picture that you yeah. set up your face on. The, the lighting and mm -hmm. everything, yeah. Um, and then in uh, – other than that, um, everything else was kind of uh, just – some UI stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a data saver that would keep apps from running in the background. Unless yeah, you're as on Wi-Fi. As a parent, that's, you know, that's a good thing. Or even somebody who's working with a, uh, you know, a, a data allotment, right. you know, at that time, you know, you were looking at, I'm guessing one gigabyte, two, five gigabyte right. plans. So you're getting into these HD screens and you're doing YouTube consumption. YouTube, mobile. Netflix and a lot of those things yep. can chew through that so real fast. Data Saver gives you the ability to say, you know what, I don't want these apps to kind of constantly ping or refresh right. unless I'm on Wi Fi. Right. And that's something I feel like I could do better. Sure. Uh, if I 
if I had to care. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. data yeah. plans are different. Limited now. data plan, it's it's not as much of a thing, but back then it was very much a I'm out of there's, I'm out of my data already. What happened? Yeah. It's like there's well, four of us chewing up ten gigabytes. Right. Which one of you is doing that? Yeah. Oh well, you know Don't what? Don't update your apps unless you're at home, please. Yeah. Please. Uh Snapchat, Wi Fi only boys. Right. You know? Yeah. Um other than that, there was uh, the keyboard added mm-hmm. uh, GIF support, so all the fun times. Yeah, well, and that feels like it's been around longer than this. I know, right? You know, five years, it feels like it's kind of been – but I think some of that comes from third-party keyboards right. that would allow for that. Right. Or something you might have installed that had that, Right. you know, a, a GIF app that you can export to your chat program. Right. But, yeah, this puts it at a – Platform level through Android. And then the other thing we have here is uh, you could adjust the overall display size, meaning your font and your icons and things like that. That's a – I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had to do that much other than, you know, like do I want – for text messaging purposes. Sure. You know, do I want to set that as medium, small? And I I used to kind of default to – one below the normal yeah. in terms of size because I just want to have more on the screen. Right. But uh, not as young as I used to be. Right. And uh, it, it, But it's nice that, you know, you can go two, three, four levels above where we're at now. Right. Where if you give a phone to a parent or grandparent, well, I can't see these icons. I don't yeah. know what these are. Well, it's an easy way to say, well, here, all of your pictures and all of your fonts and everything are going to be – Big, right. you know, I call them Pee Wee Herman size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you can make them so that it's just kind of like very obvious. Yeah. You know, and in your face kind of stuff. Um, I think that's it. I, uh, There's one other feature here uh, at the bottom. Yeah. And we love this. I love this feature <laughs> so much. And this came with Android 7.1. So it wasn't at launch. Right. It came with 7.1. And it was... One of those features that was exclusive to the Pixel phones yes. at the time for a short bit. Yeah. It was a gesture that you could opt into called Moves, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it gives you the ability to use your fingerprint reader mm-hmm. on the back of your phone to just swipe down and pull down your notification bar it's, and see everything. It's so great. I remember showing this to you at the theater, dude. It blew my mind. Like, watch this. It flipped the phone around, and it's just scrolling that stuff down. That was something that sounds kind of like maybe we're making too much out of it. Yeah. But there is something about swiping down just to see what the message was or well, the next step. In a- there's no – I think that the best thing about it for me is it's one hand. Only you don't have to because before yeah. it was you would unlock your phone and then I'm left handed so I hold my right. phone in my left hand and then I have to take my right hand my finger mm-hmm. and swipe down to see my notifications yeah this was just I'm already have my finger there to unlock the phone I just yeah. swipe down and it just is there pick the phone up and your fingers on it unlocked Ugh, by the time so, you flip it it's just such a great design like. And I missed it. So I I have recently gone back to a phone. We talked about this yeah. last episode. I'm back on the 4A 5G. Mm-hmm. I was using the Pixel 4 XL. which No fingerprint. No fingerprint. Just face unlock, which, you know, face unlock, it was it was fine. It worked great. It was mm-hmm. fast. It had the, um, the Pixel 4 was, uh, they kind of uh, hyped the fact of the, like, the infrared camera or yeah. the radar I forget what they called it but it was very fast to unlock mm-hmm. face unlock uh, but I found myself really missing that just that little tiny swipe gesture to pull down my notifications yep and oh if you're following a game you yep. could swipe down and see the score and then swipe away yep and put it back in your pocket oh it's yeah so great I'm interested to see how that might change with um, s- newer phone models that have in display, in display fingerprint. I miss it so much. Yeah, the last couple of phones I've used for reviews have in display fingerprint, mm-hmm. and I miss it. Yeah, um, 
the closest you can kind of get to that is a lot of them offer gesture support. Sure. So you kind of swipe down yeah. from anywhere on the home screen. Yep. But what we're talking about, you could do from anywhere on your phone. Yes. You could be in your email yes. and swipe down to see the text that says, okay, heading out now. Right. And then swipe up, you know. Right. But, yeah, I. that's one of those things where I never really felt like it was broken and we don't need – Right. Don't go fixing it. Yeah. You know, give me the – I, I'm a I'm a fan of the rear fingerprint reader. Yeah, and that was one of the features as to why. Yeah, uh, Luke, do you want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. All right, um, we'll take a quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about two phones. Yeah, actually, three technically. All right. Yep. Um, one interesting thing, you know, we'll save it for the second half, but. Uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll talk about the Google Pixel, Pixel XL, mm-hmm. and the LG V20. Yeah. All right, we're back. Hey, hey. Did you miss me? I did. Not. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, burn. Ooh. No, ooh, terrible. Get that <laughs> crap off of here. I'm going to have to edit that out. Nah, you won't. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk phones. All right. So, uh, Luke, what was the first phone to run Nougat version? Ooh. It's kind a of a trick question. Yeah, I know the answer. And I think a lot of people listening are like, oh, yeah, obviously. The Pixel. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> the LG V20. It was. Hit the market a month earlier. Yeah. And was the first official phone to run Nougat. Mm-hmm. Now, it ran the 7.0 version. Yes. The Pixel would arrive a month or so later, and it had the 7.1 release. Which probably made it feel just more a, fully. A little more well-rounded yeah with the daydream and the fingerprint fingerprint the gesture so let's talk about the v20 briefly sure uh this phone arrived september 6th and was priced about 670 to about 830 okay depending on where you got it okay um, not cheap not cheap this was a tough sell and i think at a point where lg started to maybe creep a little bit into its exploratory phases yeah of let's try a new secondary display mm-hmm. the little ticker mm-hmm. um let's go with you know the flex you remember the curve phone yeah they they did a lot of things that was kind of like we can do these things we can yeah. make these things they had the rollable curve you know displays mm-hmm. and stuff that they still make yep but this is an interesting point because it starts to become the slow downward trajectory for LG. Right. Um, not to say that they didn't have some really cool phones in the V series and the G series. Absolutely. Sure. But I don't think they did themselves any favor by getting into so many exploratory um, and like concept prototype kind of things. Sure. That uh, and just that high price point, it's, right? It's it's hard to play in that field. It is, especially when you have, um, like you said, exploratory features and design. There's a lot of yeah, and the, one of the things that they did here, and we'll get to that, is they did these you know hi-fi audio recorders and um, yeah, twenty-four bit DAC, you know, these things where it was like. If you record audio and you, you know, use your device for film or video and things like that, you love it. But how many people are doing that? Well, that true and at, but at the same time, if you are that person, are you trusting your phone to do that? Right. You already have probably dedicated hardware to do that anyway. Yeah. So and cameras, you know, aren't just megapixels but as we'll see 
It's the software capabilities, yep. the image stabilization, the upscaling, the filters and effects and the digital smoothing and all these little things. And LG did a great job of adding a lot of that to their devices. But again, it was it it seems so niche to me. Yeah. And almost kind of like an abundance of things mm-hmm. where the average person just wants to open up their camera and snap a pic and be done. Right. And just because phones can now record 4K video, how many people are doing that? Right. You know, if you're a content creator or blogger, vlogger, that type of thing, then, yeah, you might look for that. But at this time, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't need all that. Yeah. Um, all that's doing from from the most consumers is going, that's just taking up storage. Yeah, like – why would I shoot 4K? You know how much that's going to eat up my storage on my phone, right? You know, but well, or, or they were doing it just not realizing it. You know, yeah. oh, I'm shooting 4K footage. Wait, my phone says it's full. What's going on? Yeah, if you, yeah, I mean, you've got 64 gigabytes on this particular mm-hmm. model, and if you don't have a micro SD, that's not much space. No, not with you're shooting 4K video. Yeah, with you know high high quality audio that's taking more yeah uh, more room anyway um but yeah so specs on this it had uh a snapdragon 820 quad core mm-hmm. processor at 2.2 gigahertz it had a four gig four gigs of ram mm-hmm. um 64 gig internal storage micro sd up to two terabyte so that's a ton of storage extra uh those memory cards were not cheap no. At that time. Yeah. I mean, Mary, they've might come be, down a, a lot since then, but yeah, still. At that point, you were probably buying a 64, 128. Right. And feeling like, eh, it's about all I really want to put into this. Um, but this had a nice display. It was a 5.7 inch uh, 2560 by 1440 display mm-hmm. and Gorilla Glass 4. So it was a, it was a nice, sturdy display. Um, camera wise, it was a 16 megapixel and an eight megs- megapixel rear. Mm-hmm. And then on the front, so it had this dual camera on the back and in front was a five megapixel front camera. Yeah. Um, USB C charger, uh, and a 3200 milliamp battery with quick charge three. Yeah. I mean, again, this has the, if the, if you bought a phone today that mm-hmm. kind of came this well-rounded, mm-hmm. it would probably be more expensive. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I'm looking, I'm reading down these specs going, this seems pretty good. Pretty, Yeah, well, and then I don't have it written down here, but this was also um, military-grade impact resistance. Oh, uh, right, yeah. So the mil standard mm-hmm. 810G. Yep. Uh, so it was designed to really do a lot and take a lot. Yep. And... It's that finding it, wanting to put the money into it and overcome like, well, I could always just go with the new Galaxy. Right. Or I could do Apple. You know, there's an, right. at this time of year, right. it's iPhone season. Right. So. Well, and I think I think this phone probably would have done better if it wasn't for the next phone we're going to talk about. Yep. Because I think this one got overshadowed by the Pixel. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it was it was the new exciting. Google is making their phone again. Yeah, they're going back to to making their phone. So I remember I actually went to the event for this in San Francisco. Yeah, and I remember how at the time it felt like the message was much more about what Google and Google Assistant can do and sure. how you're going to access that. And this was really right around the time that um, the home mini right, and smart speakers and just kind of like we're making a play for your home and Google Assistant is going to be, you know, a, a key part of that. Yeah. And I remember that um, this particular one had a feature – the Pixel had a feature that I didn't know that I would ever use. Mm. And I remember writing a piece about how I felt like it was kind of 
almost silly to have, mm. but it was squeeze mm. to trigger the assistant. Yeah. So if you're holding your phone and you just squeeze the edges, yep. I came to use that so much. Yeah. More than just using my voice. Yeah. Like I just grabbed my phone and squeeze because I knew I was, what I was about to ask it was a question or right. uh, use Google Assistant. Um, so yeah, this launched with uh, Android 7.1 and came in two versions. There was the Pixel and then there was the Pixel XL. And this is the line that they continue to do today. And yeah. as we record this, there's the Pixel 6 mm-hmm. on the horizon. Right. Um, Specification-wise, these were nearly identical phones, save yeah. for the screen size and battery. Yep. Yeah. And it's interesting to look at what the bigger phone had. Yeah. Screen size. Yeah. And compare that or contrast that with today's device. Yeah. Uh, Spec-wise... Um, this has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 821, hmm. which is just on paper sounds like, hey, that's just that's a little bit newer. better than yeah. the 820 yeah. that was in the LG. And interestingly enough, it's a quad core as well, but 2.15 gigahertz. Right, so, so the clock speed is slightly slower. On that, yeah. But then I think when you factor in some of the other things that the phone's right. capabilities of – with the the AI stuff mm-hmm. and the camera technology mm-hmm. and uh, just the way that Android runs, yeah, you know that's a negligible kind of thing, right? Um, but it you know obviously is a slightly uh, improved processor. Yep, clock speeds don't have to be everything, right? Uh, this was paired with four gigabytes of RAM mm-hmm. and came with thirty two or one twenty eight gigabytes of storage, right? Which seems kind of weird that they would skip 64 right. or not start with 64. Yeah. But one of the key features at the time was that uh, all of your photos would be backed up for life yes. at full resolution yes. through Google Photos. So if you had a Pixel phone, you didn't have to worry ever about storage space. Nope. It was free. And... They didn't do anything to compress or mm-hmm. you know, resize your photo. Now, even though when they do that, it still looks incredible. Right. But to say, no, I want to take the photo that I took and I want to do something with it, you know, post-editing on a computer or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so 32 wasn't as bad as it sounded. Right. If you said, well, what about all my pictures? Don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Uh, 128 makes sense. Uh, keeps parity with what a lot of flagship phones were starting to right. have standard at the time. Um, no micro SD card though. No, and just that, internal storage. It was just like I remember thinking that feels risky. Yeah, because I've been conditioned for years to have that peace of mind. Have yeah. that like, well, here's where I've got some of my stuff saved. Yeah, or it was, apps that are you know backed up. It was a known accessory purchase when you got a new phone. Mm-hmm. So new phone, I need to get a case. I need a car charger if it's a different kind of mm-hmm. port, and I need an SD card. Yep. And this was like, oh, okay. Well, hopefully, I don't where we're going, you don't need roads, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, trust us. Yeah. Uh, this one also had a twelve point three megapixel rear camera, mm-hmm. eight megapixel front camera, mm-hmm. and I remember this camera it had the uh, highest rating on a DX mark or DXO mark. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, that it was just the best phone camera on the market. Ever. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And I was like, that's a bold claim. I remember seeing photos of of those. I remember seeing the photos taken by the phone. Yeah. And going, oh, my gosh. Yeah. This looks incredible. Yep. And it wasn't perfect. If you look back today, no. yeah. you can see like if some take a shot out in the wild and if somebody's hair is blowing, mm-hmm. it doesn't pick up, you know, it might blur around the hair and then also between spots not blur sure. it, which, but generally speaking, uh, in, in good conditions, it was just stupendous. And I yeah. remember with the review unit having gone around and it was just 
fun mm-hmm. to take pictures yeah. of just things. Yeah. Because switching it to portrait mode does wonders for things. Mm-hmm. And I, I to to this day, I still hold on to a Pixel phone. Even I've got a 3A that I just used over the weekend to take photos mm-hmm. because Google does such an incredible job of the simple point and shoot. And people see pictures and they're like, how do you take these really good photos? And I tell them, it's not me. Yeah. It's the camera. Yeah. And I just put it on portrait mode. Yeah. I just shoot that. Yeah. And it knows how to intuit distance between the subject and yep. the background. And this is back at a time with just one camera. Yeah. They were doing really incredible things when other phones had, you know, two mm-hmm. and sometimes three. Sometimes starting to creep into three. Mm-hmm. This phone also had a three and a half or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Right. And they made a big deal about it. I remember mm-hmm. at the time because the iPhone 7 was the one that came out maybe. Yeah. Where they. No headphone jack. Took it away. Yeah. And Google was like, ha ha, ours has one. Yeah. Fast forward to the future and now the standard Pixel line doesn't have it. Yeah. Um, it's always interesting to me when companies are want to point and laugh at other companies for making decisions. And then do the same thing. And then do the same thing. Right. And then don't feel like they should be held to some right. scrutiny. Well, and I think, you know, the, the reasoning is just the market changes and you have, you know, obviously Bluetooth is a lot better now and you mm-hmm. have the ability to use, uh, you know, wireless technology for a lot of those connections. But it, it is interesting, um, to see just an an ad being uh, put out saying ours is better because of this, and then mm-hmm. you know down the line it's wait a second you you just said right well then you can actually flip the conversation around and say well we saw the trend coming first right we knew that the industry was changing right not we had a hand in it right. but yeah we saw that before you did mm-hmm. so that's why we took it out right so. I mean, you go back to like removing a floppy disk drive from, sure. you know, Apple computers. And it's right. like, wow, how can you do that? That's such a stupid thing to do. Well, I think, I think um, for me, Apple has always done that, right? And, mm-hmm. and the, it's the intention and the impact on the consumer. Apple's is more of the, this is the way the market's going, get on board. Yeah. And and Google has always, or for the most part, always been the, hey, now now there's actually good ways to to do this. Mm-hmm. So we're taking it away because we feel like there's enough options that you you won't miss this. Yeah. Um, when Apple does it, it's a you don't need it. If you buy this and this and this from us, it'll be fine. Right. Um, so I think that's the difference in, in my mind of the, you know, it's implemented later on seemingly late by Google or other, um, lines, other carriers or manufacturers, because, uh, it's, Hey, now it's not going to, it's not going to impact your life as negatively because there are, there are options to accommodate this now. Yep. And and if you really need it, we have an accessory. Right. Yeah. We're happy to sell you uh, to get that. Uh, So the big difference between the Pixel and the Pixel XL Mm -hmm. was that the standard came with a 5-inch display, 1080p, and the XL came in with this massive (laughs) 5.5-inch 1440 pixel. Yeah. And it's fun to think about that being a big screen. Right. And I remember feeling like reviewing both of them – it's like this does feel a little bit more unwieldy and mm-hmm. almost cumbersome, mm-hmm. and this half inch doesn't sound like much, but wow, look at these games! Yeah, like, when you open an email, I've got four more lines to my message. Well, and, and you had a better resolution too. Yeah, that helps a lot. And if you're going with that VR, mm-hmm. then that's where you really kind of pick that up. Right. Uh, battery. 2770 mm-hmm. milliamp hours for the Pixel versus 3450. So you do need more battery to bigger screen. push that bigger screen. Sure. And if you're going with a bigger 
overall design or form factor, you have the room to do that too. Right. Luke, do you remember doing very much uh, or spending much time with any of the original Pixel? Uh, I spent a little bit of time with it, yeah. Uh, I think for me, it was the first time I could truly say Android felt cohesive. Yeah. And fully thought out. Yeah. And that was with the way the phone mm-hmm. worked with Google Assistant because that was super smart and yep. really nowhere near it is today. Right. But it just felt right. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this is what you're capable of if you keep everything under one house. Yes. And it was, I mean, it was HTC stuff, mm-hmm. really, you know, that they had just picked up sure. prior to that. But I thought that the... uh the pixel was just kind of like i you know what i really like the nexus stuff but this just feels like a, a different animal yeah and uh i've convinced more than a handful of people over the years to go pixel yeah and they they don't go back yeah it's that stock launcher that's clean android as it's intended yep and it's just beautiful yeah <laughs> and, and and it continues to get that way yep uh, would you have been more of a Pixel or XL kind of guy? Uh, I always tend towards the XL yeah. just because I do mobile gaming and mobile like video mm-hmm. watching and stuff. And so I, I always like the more screen real estate. But interestingly enough, I have found myself in, you know, maybe the past year going, I don't know if I really need that much more of a screen. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I like it to fit in my pocket easily. Yeah. Well, they, they still had a little bit of bezel yeah. at that time, and they weren't true edge to edge wrap around. Right. Cameras were still above the screen mm-hmm. at that point, so you weren't even into the notch phase. Right. Or the hole punch. Right. So they they were longer. Yep. Um, yeah, and when you look at that, has a. 5.5 inch display yeah but when you look at let me pull up what the 5a which is the most recent one mm-hmm. and that is you know within the last month or so really yeah. kind of hit the ground uh it's the biggest display that the a series has had and really one of the biggest displays of any pixel phone mm-hmm. uh, you're talking about a 6.1 inch <laughs> Well, actually, the display, full screen display is 6.34. Yeah. 6.1 tall. Uh, so huge compared to almost the, another the inch regular, screen. the yeah. original Pixel XL. Yeah. So, and, and that goes to the aspect ratio. Phones have right. gotten thinner. Right. And you're able to slide that camera in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the price on these. I, I remember feeling like this feels right, but yeah. I wish it wasn't this yeah. high. Yeah, uh, The Pixel, the 32 gigabyte was 650 The 128 was 750 mm-hmm. And then you can go with the Excel, which started at about 120 bucks more. Yeah. At 770 and 870 Right. And that was, uh, that was a tough call. To make recommendations because I was, I still had that hesitation on do I say 32 is enough storage or right. do I recommend dropping an extra 100 bucks, right? You know, to go basically double the storage or quadruple the storage, right? Um, I'm okay with, I feel like 32, 64, maybe all I need in perpetuity now. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down to what are you doing on your phone? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, if you are a person that records a lot of video, I can definitely see the need for a bigger storage side. Or if you have a ton of applications and games, that stuff adds up. But Some really, of the games are huge today. Yeah, they are. They really are. But at the same time, really, how many do you need to have on your device at one time? Right. You know? Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, I feel like there's a whole conversation around that. Mm-hmm. That, that you could have on well this is like i mean well, if that's the kind of person you are then i'd be why don't you play consoles see, or yeah are, are, are you a gaming phone person and what is you know right why do you go with a gaming phone or right. 
Yeah. I'd be interested to see now people that get the larger storage size on things. What does their storage percentage actually look like? That's a good question. Are you buying it just for the peace of mind or are you like, are you coming in at like 70% of that Yeah, and kind of need it? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if if you had 128 gigs of storage and you use 50%, you're all already double the 32. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's interesting, you know, what, what goes into that size? I mean, obviously there's a little bit of the OS that is part of that, Mm -hmm. that storage size already, but that's not, that's negligible now. It's yeah. Not as, as much as that it used to be a problem. But, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would ever need anything more than 32 or 64. Yeah. And I was, I was one of the people that was like, I need the biggest because what if? Right. Well, as you say that, I'm going to pull up my phone and just see where I am because I don't remember the last time I actually checked mm-hmm. the storage on my phone to see what I have. And now this particular phone that I'm using here is a OnePlus 8 Pro. So it is, you know, a year and a half old now. Um, I'm at 74 gigabytes used out Mm. of 128. Okay. But eight of that is photos and videos. And 22 gigabytes other apps. So, I mean, we're looking at like three gigabytes of Audible files Mm -hmm. that I know I could clean up. Mm -hmm. Um, Chrome, little things like that, that if you start to clean some of that up. Sure. And I just hit free up space, I'm sure it's going to take me down. Yeah. And then there's all these download files and everything else. So, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting at 74 and I'm... I've been reviewing a lot of games lately too. Mm-hmm. Like so I've got things on here that I'm not even truly using. Yeah. I I don't I don't know if I've I don't know. 64 might be it. If, I mean, with warnings, with sure. things that might say, "Hey, you're getting close." Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I'm actually using a lot more than I thought I was. So this I'm on the 4A 5G. Yeah. It's 128 gigs storage. I'm using 57. Okay. So it's like 32 gigs worth of apps storage now. Yeah. And uh, nine, almost 10 gigs of games. Some, yeah. And 10 gigs of video. But some of those are games that you're only on there to review. Exactly. And as soon as you're done, that might free up two to five. Right. And a lot of the video capture, it, a lot of that video is screen caps. Of the games of that you're game reviewing. Reviews, so, yeah. but that's still more than I thought I was using. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. The more you, you know. Yeah, if you got a 32 gig phone, then you'd be pulling SOL. your hair out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I think that's it for me here. Yeah, dude. All right. So this was um, the Android 7 mm-hmm. podcast, uh, deep dive into Android Nougat. And uh, we've only got a few more until we're done here. We've got major releases pretty much here on out, our full round integers. Yep. And uh, we've got Android 12 kind of looming on the horizon here in the next couple of weeks mm-hmm. with its official, you know, leave the beta stage and arrive with a device, obviously likely with the right. Pixel 6. But, um, yeah, so next episode we'll be doing Android 8. Mm. Oreo. Oreo. So I got to get my notes in order yeah. for that before we... We're not talking about You're going to tell cookies. us how to make Oreos? <laughs> no. I'll get it right next time, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take it easy.